Ready? Good morning, everyone. It's good to have everybody here on this fairly warm day, and but I hear the cold weather is coming. So, <laughs> um, do we have any Glade matters this morning? Uh, don't forget to sign up for cakes in the back for the uh, church supper. And don't forget about the church supper. We need everybody's help. And bring your friends, your neighbors. Because <laughs> uh, from what Tammy thinks, this is going to be the biggest one we ever had. So she said, she says she's getting calls right and left, three or four a day, you know, asking about it. So, so well, so... Make sure we have plenty of food, Ron. <laughs> um, I also I had put, had them put in the bulletin that the UC, UCC down in Jefferson is having um, a trip to see David up at Sight and Sound. If anybody's interested, just let me know. Um, there are some extra tickets. And also, if anyone is interested in going to the, um, or doing the mission trip in June, It'll be the first full week in June this year, and they, um, they'd kind of like to have an idea about numbers due to the hotel room. So if anybody is even thinking about it, because we can easily cancel out, but it, you know, it's better that we have more. So if anybody is, is interested, please, uh, please let me know, and uh, you know, we can get you started on the, on the process for that. And I guess that's all, Bill.
please join me in the call to worship. God has given us breath to live and spirit to sing. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. Let us worship God with love, thanksgiving, praise, and complete surrender to the one who calls us to love. God has called us to share love and compassion with ourselves, each other, even with those who are troublesome and difficult, even our enemies. Please join me for the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my from where will my help come? He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at the at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. You may be seated. Let us pray our prayer of confession. Jesus, you set before us the way of wisdom to care for the poor, feed the hungry, share instead of hoard our possessions, but it is a way that is counter to the ways of the world. We consider it wise and prudent to take care of ourselves first, to accumulate possessions, and to hoard and plan and secure our lives through those possessions. You call such behavior foolish. Forgive us, Lord, when such foolishness becomes the focus of our lives. Help us become wise in your ways and with your wisdom. Amen. The scripture reading is Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Love for enemies. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of God for the people of God.
We welcome all of those who are watching this from their own special places this morning, as well as those of you who are present here in this sanctuary. We're all one congregation this morning, being uh, supportive of each other, whether we are here or some other place. And may you be well, may you be happy, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you live with ease. This, this, this blessing is the place to begin and to end in practicing compassion. It's really derived from a, a Buddhist blessing. Um, and it is, uh, I guess, an important sort of uh, idea to hold on to as we contemplate what it's like and what it means to us to practice compassion in the world. Uh, with people who give us joy, with people who give us trouble, with people who treat us badly, even who disagree with us. Can you imagine someone disagreeing with us? <laughs> Unfortunately, my friends, we have more opportunity than ever to show compassion to love each other and to, who are closely related and to love each other when those we don't even know or know very well. Much less to love those whom we see as difficult or the ones who we see as enemy. The range and scale of relationships and events that might come to mind as I speak these words is extremely wide these days from the from the unbelievably horrific to uh, not so important, really. Uh, from personal relationships and issues that happen between two people or several in a family or in a work setting or even in church. Um, all who care for each other. Um, conflicts in an organization or in a congregation between one or more people gang activities, uh, gangs attacking each other in cities, national leaders uh, and politicians just blasting each other in these, particularly in these days and in the next, how many days do we have to bear this? Um, my mute button on my TV clicker is, is getting worn out because I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to, hear it. Um, and then there are those extremes that we hear about and people experience and read about almost too, too, certainly too often and almost weekly. One person with an AR-15 automatic weapon shooting and killing groups of people in a school or a movie house or a nightclub or, and on and on and on. Situations when compassion and I would add moral courage are called for. In peace, if peace and harmony are to reign in our lives. The fundamental question may be this morning is how do we respond to people who are difficult, who are who pose a threat to us, that are our enemy. Just this past week, the assassin of all of those folks at Parkland School um, was given a life sentence. And I saw on the TV the agony in the faces of those who were, who were wanting, I don't know whether it was revenge, but their child is dead and they want to see the one who killed him to be dead also. And there's great research in the past that somehow ultimately uh, 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 a death penalty doesn't really bring the, the healing and the satisfaction one hopes they might get from it. But struggling with someone who's done such a horrific thing to, the, to them. Rick Warren, uh, I don't know if you recall, he founded the uh, Saddleback Community Church in California, a, a, a Southern Baptist church, but a community church. He's, there are 15 or more 
uh, satellite congregations across California and uh, other places in other, uh, in other countries. Um, he was the author of The Purpose Driven Life, The Purpose Driven Church. Uh, recently said on a Facebook post the following, our culture has accepted two huge lies. The first is that if you disagree with someone's lifestyle, you must fear or hate them. And the second is that if you love someone, it means that you have to agree with everything they believe or do. <laughs> Makes me smile. Both are nonsense, he says. You don't have to compromise convictions to be compassionate. End of that quote. Well, let me see. I don't agree with some, if not a lot, of what Rick Warren um, says and preaches and teaches, but I have used his educational materials. Um, he started, through his ministry, a wonderful pro recovery program called Celebrate Recovery, which is still growing strong around the country in, in many churches. Uh, I, he invited me and lo, er, area pastors as a special guest when the Museum of the Bible was opened. I got my picture taken with him. He's, he's a very big man, and, and, uh, <clears throat> but uh, got my picture taken with him. Um, so I appreciate him in some ways. I especially appreciate his passion for Jesus and Jesus' teachings. Warren might be the first to say that many of these experiences that we t am referring to are, are, are complex. I'm certainly not so naive to suggest that these experiences are resolved just by turning the other cheek. Although sometimes that's all we can do. Please understand the, the events are are, are complex beyond the telling when it comes to how to respond, especially when the other does real harm to you or to someone else. If nothing else uh, in our life, we want to practice compassion, but if nothing else, let's do no harm, um, which is as, as an important um, sort of principle to follow as, as any. And when others do harm to us, we have choices for, to forgive them, to walk away, to confront them, and to hold them accountable. Even so, there is so much harm done these days, especially when you look at, at the war in U U Ukraine or Uvalde Elementary School in Texas, or just this past week in a neighborhood in Raleigh, North Carolina. These are horrific uh, events. And fortunately, you and I most, mostly, uh, all of us, don't have to deal with those certain circumstances. But the people in Raleigh didn't expect this past week to wake up to some teenager with a, uh, with a gun uh, acting evilly. Um, as a general rule, you and I don't live in the midst of these horrific events. As I said last Sunday, mostly we live in the mundane, day-to-day -day stuff, in the grocery store line, and in, in traffic, uh, and in situations where n not much harm is done. Or I have to go to the doctor quite often for tests to keep my body in and uh, limbs together and, and, and healthy. And when I go to the doctor's office, I want to sit and be quiet and wait for my appointment. I don't want to engage in a conversation with anybody. But half the people often in the, the doctor's offices I go to want to talk. <laughs> they want to tell you their story or they want to know what you're there for. And I am not a very compassionate person when, it, when, when that happens. Like, Okay, just leave me alone, you know, can't help it. Um, let me read 
uh, the four, I think four, pat, four uh, verses of scripture just preceding the one that Bonnie read this morning. Uh, this is from the uh, translation of the message. Here's another old saying, Jesus says, that des deserves a second look. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Is that going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose, Jesus says. Don't hit back at all. If someone strikes you, stand there and take it. If someone drags you into court and sues for the shirt off your back, gift, rack, gift wrap your best coat and make it a present to them. And someone takes on an unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, but this is one of the most challenging, downright difficult, if not impossible, commands or invitation Jesus offers to us in Scripture. Love your enemy, enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In other words, show compassion to those who are difficult in your life. To those who are rude or obnoxious or rigid or insulting or mean or hurtful, even evil. The Dalai Lama who says, what you wish to experience, provide to the other. Another way to say that is, do not tie your peace of mind to the state of mind of another person. The problem we have sometimes, like little kids, we'll get into an argument and, no, you did it, I know you didn't, I didn't, back and forth. And as we go back and forth, the, the tension, um, the rudeness, the, the upset accelerates and deepens and it just goes on and on and on and on, back and forth, back and forth. Did you hear the adjectives I described to those who are difficult? Adjective, what um, adjectives do we use? Rude, that person is rude, obnoxious, rigid, insulting, mean, hurtful, evil. Yes. And when we respond as defensive and frustrated and withdrawn, we tend to get louder and louder just as the other person gets louder and louder and responds in kind. You know how that goes. The author Bill Crawford offers us an, a neat little exercise for dealing with this in our lives. And he has a magic question, he says, that, that we can ask ourselves. Um, and that is, when someone has offended you and won't come to terms with you, or won't enter into a process of reconciling your differences, the question is this, on a scale from one to 10, how important is that person to you? You might, as you're trying to listen to this today, think about a particular person that might come to mind, the person who cuts you off on the highway. How important are they to you? <laughs> maybe a zero, maybe one. But, but we can spend the next 20 minutes living in relationship with them if not longer. But if someone is our spouse, our, our good friend for life, uh, our child, then they may be a 10 and they're worth, and the relationship is worth giving a great deal more effort to reconciling, to healing, to showing compassion, to living it and practicing it with that person. 
My friends, no matter how important another person is to you, if you allow their state of mind to be tied to or defined your peace of mind, then you will find it harder and harder to be compassionate and loving to them. In AA, Al Alcoholics Anonymous, we have this saying that is quite relevant, which I think some of you might have heard me say before. Do not, do not let another person live, live rent free in your head. If they're there, at least charge them something. <laughs> When I was the interim pastor at my first church, <clears throat> um, Zion Reform UCC in Hagerstown, um, I got eventually uh, in a relationship with one of the leaders of the church, got really, we got really crossways with each other, and finally blurted out to me one day in a conversation that he didn't, he didn't believe me, he, didn't tr he was having a hard time trusting me. And uh, the next morning, I was driving to uh, uh, beyond Baltimore, I don't remember where, but crossing the, the Susquehanna River, not Baltimore, but, but north, and uh, got to thinking about him. He got in my head, and I couldn't let go. And, and at some point, I rolled down my windows as I crossed the windows of my car as I crossed that river, and I blurted out his name, and I said, get out of my head, go away. It worked for, for, for a time. We were eventually able to, uh, to, to reconcile and, and to continue to work together, but uh, he spent a lot of time up here. Um, he, because he was important to me. All right, he was an eight or nine, and uh, that was, I, I needed to find a way to be compassionate toward his obstinate way of thinking about things. So, how do you deal with those folks who simply will not accept your compassion, won't accept your forgiveness? much less any forgiveness or compassion coming your way. Well, first, there's always the necessity for accountability, holding each other accountable, showing compassion while still expecting others who've broken your trust to work to regain or re-earn your trust. And that doesn't ever happen, and sometimes it just won't. Indeed, uh, broken relationships will remain broken. Uh, well, Jesus asked, asked uh, Peter asked Jesus one time, if you recall from the scriptures, how many times do we forgive someone? A couple? <laughs> Three or four maybe? Peter thought seven. Jesus thought differently. Seven times Seven. Even more than that, Jesus says, 77 times. Maybe 77 times you've shown compassion and tried to achieve some form of coming together. And then perhaps, and nothing good comes of that, it seems, then perhaps the best you can do is to continue to hold that person in prayer, to continue to keep your peace of mind, focused on who you are and let go and let God do the rest. Pat and I went to, uh, I'm running out of time here, but I'll, I want to add this. Pat and I went to a program on Wednesday night at uh, Frederick Community College uh, and saw a film called Being Mortal about the death and dying process and uh, uh, presented by the hospice program at Frederick Health. And there was a, a, a lot of discussion about uh, how, to, how to heal a, a ruptured relationship, especially in, as you get to the end of time with, with someone. And you don't wait until the end, the emergency room, to do that. They, they urged us to think about the conversations we need to have um, now. And there were four things that, uh, if I remember these correctly, if not, Pat will correct me or help me, uh, that we can say to each other. 
not, not in hospice care, not later on, not close to the end, but now, today. To one of those people who's an eight or a nine can say, I love you, I'm sorry, I forgive you, and thank you. Thank you, I'm sorry, I forgive you, I love you. Doesn't matter which order. May you be well, may you be happy, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you live with ease, and may it be so with you and with me this day. Amen. Shall we sing our hymn? be seated. Sometimes this week when uh, the anxiety or the, the struggle with another person comes, uh, find that hymn and uh, sit and read the words, if not sing them, and, and let it speak to you. It's a beautiful message in and of itself. The Lord be with you. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're standing there with a the microphone. I, had, I don't remember how to do this, you know. <laughs> what are your joys and concerns that you would share this morning? Those that you can say out loud to the rest of us. I can probably say loud well enough for everybody to hear. <laughs> um, I have a couple friends, if you can keep in your prayers. Um, my college roommate, Lisa, is having her second knee replacement on the same knee because the first one failed. And she just had another issue and was in the hospital over uh, ER the other day. She's back home now. Um, and then my other friend, Scott, um, his cancer's back. And at the moment, he has COVID, two other related things. Um, but treatment for both. So she's great. Thank you. So we would pray for Lisa and Scott, yes. both with uh, medical, medical issues. Someone else. I like how you can use, use the mic, Beverly, use the microphone so that people will 
watching can well, hear we, did, we think we talk loud anyway. Okay, I'd like continued prayers for Bob Balsall, who's up here at the nursing home. Uh, he's struggling, and we need prayers and much help for him. Um, another thing, uh, some of you who've been around for a long time know Ann Duvall Klein. She was in uh, Hopkins yesterday for her second valve. Twelve years ago, she had a valve replacement, and they were only good for ten years, and she's had some problems. And yesterday, at Hopkins, they replaced her second, for the second time, her valve. And uh, that's who I have breakfast with. Here we've been friends for 80-some <clears throat> years. I missed her this morning, but anyway, I do know that uh, she had her second valve replaced, so she would appreciate prayer, prayers, prayers from all of us, too. And I hope everybody knows that the Browns that were very active here in Glade Church, they uh, survived the storm pretty well, and we're very, very thankful for that. Thank you. I'd like to ask for prayers for our granddaughter, Summer, whose father was killed in a motorcycle accident um, a couple, about a month ago, and there was a memorial service for him yesterday, and she appears to be doing just fine, which tells me that she's not. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pat. I was going to say that. Thank you. I forgot to say thank you so much for filling in for us these these times. It's been a pleasure having you back, and you touched home with me on your sermon. So it's my my pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm not going to stand, but I was. You won't believe this, but I was at a funeral yesterday. That was a joyful time for me. My best friend at the Waynesburg Country Club, we played golf together for 35 years. He was a register at uh, Hagerstown Junior College. His name is Max Krigger. Hmm. He was one of the best liked fellows I've ever met. And there was 100 people at the wedding, I mean, at the funeral, I'm sorry. And he died on my birthday. He was a great guy. I really miss him. But it was a joy because he passed. He was supposed to have his birthday party yesterday. Oh. And he died on the, on my birthday, and they, he he was not ill any of that time at all. He had a massive heart attack and passed away. Great guy. I never met a nicer person in my life. Thank you, Bob. Anyone else? Okay. Now, the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Oh God, we pray more than ever that we can be with each other as you are with us. That we can be with each other as Jesus was with his disciples. That we can be with each other as Jesus was and is in our lives and in the world this day. For those who indeed are hurting, uh, who have uh, lost loved one, who have friends who are hurting and in medical uh, uh, emergencies and medical uh, care, we, we pray for healing. We pray that we can pray in ways that uh, to, to lead us to those people and, and lead us to you. And we thank you, O oh God, for this church and for its ministries of love and care. Uh, and we would, uh, as they uh, enter in a, a new phase of, of transition, that you will pray, that we pray for the leaders of this congregation, and that they will uh, seek your guidance and hear your word and listen to your voice as they move into. Uh, and what might be seen as an uncertain future, but a strong future nonetheless, as they seek uh, pastoral leadership in, for this congregation. We, uh, we pray for the world, for those who are uh, zero for us on a 10-point on a scale, yet we, 
we are aware of them and, and hold them in our hearts in care and love. And we pray for those who are 10 for us and uh, relationships that might need to be mended, uh, where reconciliation might need to be uh, accomplished. We pray for uh, all of us to be able to forgive, to say we're sorry, to say out loud, thank you, and I love you. For us to say we love you, O oh God, as you love us. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this moment, uh, we uh, present our offerings. And we present them logistically and practically in different ways in the basket at the rear of this uh, of the sanctuary this morning or in an envelope that those of you who are from home would mail to the church and online you have online giving right so you can go on the website and and uh, and give a big big gift uh, you won't miss it if you don't see it <laughs> continue to support the, the ministry and the life of and work of this this congregation uh, these gifts, O oh God, as they are given out of love, out of care, out of uh, support for the ministries of church. Bless us, the giver, and those who put them to use in the ministries of Glade United Church of Christ. Amen.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with each of you, be with those you love, be with those who are difficult in your lives, and be with those no one loves, save but God. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you.